All right, okay, uh, this is quite exciting to look at this. I hadn't realized just how much your um, two-beat leg kick had um, come on. Is that something you've been really yeah, actively... <laughs> no, really, okay, yeah. It's um, it's really good, actually. Really? really? Yeah, really, really good, yeah. So let's uh, let's take a little look at it. So you're swimming here at... Um, this first 100 meters is done in exactly one minute 30 per 100. One of the things that we're going to look at is what's happening um, on the recovery. Um, I really like what you're doing on the right-hand side no. here. No. Really? No. Why? Right, what, what Maybe you were going to say this. Oh, really? It's my right-hand side doesn't... Oh, does it? Uh, the reason the right-hand side is going to feel terrible underneath the water is yes. what we're going to see when we're on okay. it. But over the top of the water, if we just look at how it comes in, the right hand has carries a little bit more finesse with it. Okay. So on both sides, you've got the sort of swinging arm recovery action, you know, the high arm recovery, which is great, obviously, for open water swimming. I just feel like the left-hand side is potentially just a little bit too ballistic in its action. <laughs> uh, so if we just watch that uh, in real time again, just watch what I mean. The right one looks like it has a bit more finesse to it, whereas the left one looks very much like a bowling action over the top yeah. of the water. And there's, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. We're certainly, uh, certainly for rough open water swimming, it's actually uh, can be very beneficial. But in terms of like shoulders and stuff like that, you had a couple of niggles, didn't you, before? Right On the right hand side. side, okay. On the right hand side, then, if that's the uh, if that's the case, if we look at you swimming towards the camera here, watch. Now. One of the things that we do need to work on is how you're actually pulling through. Both arms are still pulling through a little bit on the wide and a little bit straight. Okay. But that right one look goes very, very wide indeed. Uh, so yeah. my feeling is that it's not so much what's, what you're doing over the top of the water with the right one that's hurting it, but potentially how you're pulling through. So if we just watch that, let's just watch it in slow motion actually. Um, here we go. So just see a little bit of a difference between the two sides. Both of them definitely go wide, yeah. but they're actually bolt straight. Can you see how straight they are when you're pulling they through? They never used to be straight. No, they didn't. No, no, no. Well, it's interesting because if you have a little look at this, let's go back to compare you with um, the video footage that we do have on file here for you. So, uh, there you original, this was the very first file. Just watch. Yeah, body position really, really low in the water actually. But see how the you got the nice bend there. But there's no, there's actually no umph to it. Yeah. That's obviously the big thing that we looked at there. The stroke rate is uh, significantly slower. In fact, let's just do a stroke rate check on where you're at right now. So. Um, Stroke rate right now is. I'm not sure. Funnily enough, that's in slow motion. It's, it's about, about the same speed, same, same speed as the. Uh, it's, it's less than half speed as well, actually. So here we go. So, a lot more run to it. Zero, one, two. Stroke rate. The stroke rate is 75 strokes per minute there. Uh, whereas on the video clip on the right hand side here, is that real time? That's real time, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah. 43 strokes per minute. So it's a difference of, you know, 32 strokes per minute difference. And even though technically underneath the water here on this one, it looks better. It looks better because of the way they are, the elbow is actually bending. There's actually not really applying any force to the water there on that one. Now, when we did the, uh, the second video file, so this was about a year later, uh, let's go back into here. In two. Now, if you remember underneath the water, things had straightened out a little bit on this one. But still much more of a bend than what we've got at this point in time. So, my feeling uh, with what you're doing here is even though of the three there, you're swimming the fastest, quite significantly faster on this one on the left hand side. So, this is the up to date one. Yeah. There's definitely scope for improving the way that you're pulling through here. Yeah. My wondering is whether or not, if we just go back to the uh, go back to this original one here, like, and watch it from the side. See how we've got much more of the classic sort of high elbow yeah. on the two sides. Very very smooth, but lacking umph, and you know swimming literally 45 seconds a hundred slower on yeah. the right side than when you are on the left side here. And if we go to compare the middle file again, this one here, so 
So my feeling is that this straighter arm recovery that you now have on the on this left file yeah. is maybe just carrying it over a little bit too much underneath the water. Can you see how that sort of almost like bowling action though? I re-emphasize the point, there's nothing wrong with what you're doing over the top there, so long as it doesn't carry across underneath the water, which is what it's doing at the moment. So we almost need to sort of like separate those two things, if you like, separate what you're doing over the top with what you're doing underneath the water, because if we, let's bring in uh, Shelly stroke from the top, you'll see that her arm recovers, just to sort of prove that there's nothing wrong with what you're doing there, your recovery action over the top of the water looks a lot more now like what Shelley's is doing here, yeah. but the difference is that underneath the water, she's got that bend there. Okay, so that's really what we need to try to try to get working. Now, what's beautiful about what you're doing today, and I hadn't, I hadn't really fully appreciated this until I looked at it today, was just how good you kick it, you kick it. I can't fault it. So I'm really quite excited about this. Serious? Yeah, no, seriously. Watch, watch this. Let's go. Uh... I just looked at your app of what you. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, what well, Yeah, yeah. I try it with the fins on, and I just it just felt really good. That, that's really good to know that. So let's. So this is the original video yeah. footage. Now here we've got the, the yeah the sort of. Useless. It's more of like a, a flutter kick. Let's yeah. let's call it sort of thing. A lot from the knee here. And obviously the body position sitting very low in the water. Um, that's on the first 50. Obviously this is the second. This is the third 50. Sorry, and it's obviously sitting a lot lower there. So compared to what you've got here, look, really good horizontal body position, first and foremost, which is great compared to the low sinking legs. Now again, if we bring in the the middle video footage, obviously one of the things that had improved significantly between those was your uh, body position. So the body position in this video footage here is a lot better than what we're going to see in the middle of the frame. Let's just try and get here we go, look. Yeah. I still a bit but of it. Exactly, and that's that's the point here. So if we look at, let's almost disregard the very original video footage and let's just compare like for like now in terms of what you've been doing recently. So this bit of uh, video footage here, obviously the kicking style that you've got there is what we could describe as a six beat leg kick. So it's just a steady flutter, legs are always moving. And for distance freestyle swimming, it's certainly fair to say that a two beat leg kick, if somebody can develop it properly, is gonna be a little bit more energy saving than what you're doing over here on the right hand side. So let's just focus in on what you're doing here. And this is exceptionally good. Like I say, I, I, it's hard to see this from the surface of the water. Yeah, it would um, be. You know, but uh, let's just watch here. Like, that's a beautifully timed two beat leg kick. You've just done that from the looking at the, the video file. Yeah, yeah. So that, that that's really good. That's good feedback for me to know as well, actually, because a two beat leg kick is very, very hard to teach, and it doesn't suit every swimmer. I wouldn't. Yeah. It's not like I'd take everybody in the pool here, a hundred people in the pool, and teach them what you're doing on the left hand side. It only suits a certain style of stroke and a, a certain thing going on. You wouldn't be able to do this kick with your original video footage at you know, 30 oh, strokes per minute, sink. you'd just sink, exactly right. So it requires that sort of higher oomph that you've got yeah. here. On the video footage here, you're sort of swimming about 64 to 66 strokes per minute. This is on the middle video footage. Yeah. On this one now, we're around about sort of 72, 72 to 75 strokes per minute here. You need that higher tempo, that higher rhythm to be able to support the two-beat kick. And that's why, again, if we just drop in Shelly, again on there, just to show you just I how good the kick is. I found the two-beat kick help with my rhythm. Yes. Because last rider, Absolutely, yeah. I moved from the, the flutter to no kicking. Yes. Feet just and just dragging behind, yeah. Which was okay, but I found if I got a little bit tired or if it got choppy in a certain way that my stroke rate dropped. But with the kick, because it's a bit of a it's like having a tempo trainer. I'm kidding. That. That's exactly right. You know, actually having the tempo trainer, um, I, was, I just did this little clinic on Saturday with this group in Auckland and we had um, two of the guys were absolute classic swingers as well. So I had a very similar style of stroke to what you're doing right now. Um, they had a, a, a formed two beat leg kick, not quite nicely as, as formed as what you're doing here. But one of the things I said to them is, you can use a tempo trainer to work on your stroke rate. So let's say, you know, they were sort of in the low 60s. I wanted to try and get them up to like sort of mid 60s, about 66 for them. And I said, obviously, you can time the beeper to the hand entry, or you can time it to the feet kicking. 
Oh. It's another way, it's a slightly different way of actually looking at it. And we'll have a little go doing that today because I'd be interested to get your feedback on how you how you go with that. But Shelly over here on the right, this is the best two beat leg kick we've ever filmed. It's, it's absolutely amazing. But look at how similar yours is. So just watch this. So first and foremost, the thing to get right is the timing, which yeah. is what you've got here. So Shelly's right hand goes into the water as the left foot kicks down. Your left hand's going in as the right foot kicks down. We switch it over onto the other side loop. Right hand goes in as the left foot kicks down. And then left one goes in as the right foot kicks down on Shelly there. So it's opposite to opposite. So if you just watch the rhythm of what she's doing here, it's very much like a switching sort of action, opposite to opposite. But you're doing that just as nicely. It's, uh, look at that, absolutely amazing. Now what's especially amazing about it is, if we go, let's just watch it a little bit more continuously here. And um, we're drawing some, uh, some guiding lines. I often show this video clip with Shelly for guys and girls who are trying to develop a two beat leg kick and I draw on those two lines there. When you watch Shelly, her feet never disappear below that bottom line. Oh yeah. But neither do yours, which is great. To be honest, before seeing this, I wouldn't have thought it actually went so deep anyway. I thought it was like a really yeah, like yeah. No, this, this, what you're doing here is, is, is very, very good indeed. So it maybe extends slight. Oops, my lines aren't very good there actually. <laughs> it maybe extends ever so slightly deeper than Shelley's, but very, very. You know, we're talking marginal, marginal differences. If I just show you one of the gentlemen that I took for a session on uh, the weekend, uh, let's just see if we can get the right guy. Oh, here we go. So the, this is the two of them trying to do, trying to develop this two beat leg kick a little bit better. So the first guy is a guy called Mark. So just watch him off the wall here. Now he's also doing the two beat kick, but you see how much deeper he kicks the legs? Yeah. One of the things that I was asking both of these guys to focus on is not the down beat, but the up beat. But that's what I remember you really pointing out in the app, it's focus on the up beat. And that's what I did and it made it, I kind of don't really pay attention to the down when it's all about the up. up, up. Exactly, yeah. If you, so that's, it doesn't that's, make much sense to people, but no, no, no. It, it's so important because if, when you, when most people describe a two beat leg kick, they'll describe it like I just described it to yourself. Your right hand goes in as the left foot kicks down, mm -hmm. and the left hand goes in as the right foot kicks down, so opposite, opposite. But even then, I'm emphasising the word down on the kick, whereas really the emphasis needs to be on the up, kicking the heel up towards the surface. And when you see Shelley in the middle here. You can clearly see how she does that. Pointed toes. It's perfect. Yeah, it's amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't get the pointed toes at all. Well, it's, that's an interesting thing because uh, you know, Shelley. Obviously, Shelley swam all her life True. with amazing still, level of flexibility yeah. and stuff, and and that is truly even compared to some of the other elite swimmers that we that we coach or sort of that we filmed, I should say. Um, that's an exceptional level of flexibility it is there. Quite beautiful. If you watch this guy here, look. This is a guy called Mike from the clinic. He's also doing the two beat correctly, and he's kicking the heels up now. But look at how much deeper he's kicking. So I filmed him on this one. I said, look, Mike, you've got the timing absolutely spot on. So his timing is the same as yours and Shelley's there, but he's kicking too deep. So I asked him on the next lap to come back down and just reduce the amplitude a little bit. You can see there, it's not creating quite so much, oops. Let's just go back and see it a little bit more clearly. Oh yeah. So it's a lot better than the previous lap. And that's just in the space of 25 meters focusing on it. But both these guys have since emailed me saying, I'm really struggling to, to actually get it nailed down. I feel like I'm having to concentrate quite a lot. And that's the whole thing with the two beat kick. Initially, it does require a huge amount of concentration to get it right. But then once you've got it, you start to flow like what you're doing here. And it looks exceptionally good. And like I say, I, I'm almost mad at myself that I haven't I hadn't noticed this. <laughs> I, well, it would be foolish to these swimmers in the pool. I just well, trundle along. It, is, it feels uh, good, I do it. And it, it, it is exceptionally good, look at that. So, you might look at the jump in the stroke rate of around about 10 strokes per minute as thinking, okay, well, that's, quite a, uh, that's quite a jump up. I was working with a guy yesterday whose stroke rate had jumped up a bit too much and needed to bring him back down. Yours is not in that situation though, because what's changed is you've gone from a six beat kick to a two beat kick, and naturally the stroke rate has to come up. It feels better this way. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And it is, it's flowing absolutely beautifully. 
Now, what's also good from this angle, and just getting on to what we need to work on, <laughs> from this angle, the way you're initiating the catch is spot on. The fingertips are below the wrist and the wrist is below the elbow. You can quite clearly see that you're pressing water back behind you. What we can't quite work from, out from this angle though is just how straight this arm is and also how wide of the mark it is as well. So everything from the side view, from the top of the water as well, looks good. Top of the water may be a little bit ballistic with that left hand coming in. But I, real, I, reckon, I, I reckon the real thing that we need to work on though is some TLC on the catch and pull through. So there's that left arm. Yeah, just sort of really see, just see the ballistic action. It's angry. It. Yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> slightly, slightly. Yeah, yeah. Just needs to be toned down just a smidgen. Feels so cool though. But yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to change it. To, I don't want to tra change that drastically because that's probably contributing to the rhythm. True. So it's like a, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So we've got to be a little, little bit careful about what we do with things today. But we can clearly make some differences to this because this right arm. See how wide it's going out there. I think I'm terrified to cross over with the right arm, and I think mentally that's probably what's been set in. Absolutely. Let me uh, let me just set your mind at ease on that front end. So here we go. Look, look at the alignment there. Bingo. Absolutely spot okay, on. Okay. Cool. Really good. Now, if you remember from the previous video, again, let's just do a bit of comparison here. Did have a bit of a you had a bit of crossover, exactly right, which you didn't have on the original uh, video footage. So this is the original, and we look at it from the top. So hand comes across a little bit, yeah, but not. not drastic, and sort of straightens out quite nicely. But then the middle video clip, which is probably why you've got a little bit of that concern about crossing over, is just from the top here. Here we go. See how you'd actually developed a little bit of crossover here, look, yeah. within the stroke. So that's probably where that fear or that paranoia has come from, a smidgen. So hopefully that this video clip here from the top sort of sets you, should set your mind at ease. Very, very nice indeed. Let's watch the left one come in. Left one's a little bit more across, but remember that's the one that's yeah. swinging. True. So it needs a little bit more control over the top of the water there. But the right one, look at that, perfect. Really good indeed. It's so so weird. I just have no concept. I would have... Well, I knew the left was going to be wrong because it feels good. Right, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. But I would have bet the house that my right arm was the one flailing around like a crazy person. And yeah, it, it doesn't, it's certainly um, going into the water, the right one is absolutely spot on. The left one obviously a little bit across, but it's what happens underneath the water with the right one that's probably caused a little bit of pain on the shoulder. So again, let's just watch that a little bit more clearly. So they both clearly pull very wide. Let's draw on some reference lines here. So that's the surface of the water. You want some uh, plumb lines straight down through the shoulder to the bottom of the pool, and same on this side here. And we draw on the arm position. 176, so very, very close to obviously being straight. Now, I don't know if you saw the, the blog that we ran a while back about swimming down a narrow corridor. Yeah. The whole idea being that the elbow would be the, the widest point, obviously, and hopefully, if we just bring that as a bit of a rough gauge, that's really where the forearm should be. Um, let's just put that in there to make it a little bit more clearer. And again, we'll bring in, since we've been using Shelly as an example, we'll use it here again before I show you Rebecca, just to re-emphasize the point. So as similar as you look to Shelley over the top of the water and with respect to the good body position and the two beat leg kick, the major difference is this here. Yeah. So that's what we've got to be working towards. And when the, Shelley, it's interesting actually, because Shelley, if you draw her on, oops, let's get rid of that one. If you draw Shelley there, so the magic angle, 100 to 120 degrees is what we're looking for. But if you draw on those same reference lines, obviously the elbow is the widest point. But a lot of elite swimmers will actually have that hand directly underneath that shoulder, like with Rebecca Adlington. And just draw out here, though. So see how it's a little bit, her hand is a little bit more underneath the shoulder than Shelley's is? Still at a very similar sort of angle, 105 degrees there, and 
107 for Shelley. So, um, obviously, compared with yourself, they're closer to 180. But the interesting thing there is there's some scope for a bit of individual difference here. My belief, Shelley, when I filmed her here, she was 10 years into retirement. So one argument is that her catch and pull through here, as nice as it looks, is not quite as well tuned as Rebecca going into the 2012 Olympic Games. However, however, my other theory is slightly different to that, in that Shelley is an open water swimmer, Rebecca is purely a pool swimmer. My feeling is that a slightly wider stance actually gives you a little bit more stability when it's rough and choppy. So, <clears throat> but that all being said, obviously there's a big difference there in the in the bend of the elbow. And the problem with pulling out wide, as you're doing here, is it does tend to load up the shoulder a little bit. Would it do something to your elbow itself? Well? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. You've had a bit. Right elbow gets a bit twingy. Yeah, yeah. So looking at it, you'd expect the problems that you've got on the right, you would expect them to be there on the left as well, especially because that left one throws over the top. But um, the right one there, look at that. So if we zoom right in here, did you see, <coughs> excuse me, did you see anyone for any physio work at all? No. Nope. <coughs> this, if you showed this to a physio, well, first and foremost, I'd say, you know, that's why you've got the, you've got the issue. But this shoulder here, is actually sort of, it, it's very far forwards. So you know when you had that strapping on yeah. just before Rotto and you were, I, I presume, it was to lift this to up lift, a little lift bit, it, up it, it would pinch right in there. Right in there, yeah, yeah. So that whole shoulder is sort of sitting way too far forwards. Where some strapping would be good right now, and it, don't don't change your posture right now. In your posture right now, your actually shoulders are actually hunched right the way over, yeah. which is not good. If you just imagine a bit of strapping here, perfect. So that movement there, it's just lacking in the stroke a little bit. So that combined with the fact that the arm itself is very, very straight as well, you're sort of commencing your catch, the power phase of the stroke, with the arm in that position. It's a very, very vulnerable position for the front of the shoulder. So what we need to be doing is actually just thinking, drawing it back a little bit and making sure it's not rolling too far forwards. And that combined with... It's, no, I don't, it, shouldn't be too, it shouldn't be too bad, actually. I, I think the visual of that should it should stand out like in, in your head like a bit of a beacon yeah. i remember when i came back from uh, doing the manhattan swim my left shoulder started to flare up a little bit and i was like you know like you think you think you expect your stroke to look perfect sort of thing but sally filmed me and i was also doing i wasn't quite as wide as what you're doing there but it was certainly on my left hand side the arm itself was probably at 160 degrees rather than 120 and was also sitting out a little bit on the wide side so all i simply did was i just thought about the idea of actually having the hand pulling and i tried to really imagine this line directly underneath my shoulder that my hand was trying to line up with and, you know purposely purposely thinking about poking the elbow out wide as i'm pulling through like uh, like we've got it here look is that widest point and um and it's it, it literally in the space of a couple of sessions the pain on the left shoulder just, just went away cool. so it should be uh, we should be able to tune that up quite nicely and it's an interesting thing because there is so much to like about what you're doing here like I say, I'm, I'm more impressed than I was expecting to be today, so that's a good thing. Um, however, of course, with this, this is going to be, not only is it going to be hurting the shoulder, but you're going to be losing a little bit of the proportion which we'd otherwise be generating had we be you know, bending the elbow and pressing totally back. So there's actually scope here, not just to relieve pain, but also to improve the speed a little bit more as well, which would be, which would be a really good thing. Nick. That's right, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, it's good, actually. You've got, it's good that you've got someone there to, uh, to chase at the moment. Um, obviously on that left side there. So even the left one needs uh, needs a little bit of a tune up. But what's interesting about this right one, look, is it here things are looking good, but then the elbow just never bends, and also that hand sort of pushes out almost like like wide as well, okay. like you're searching for a little bit of stability with it. So we need to do some work on just trying to uh, trying to tune that up there. So really the best <coughs> the best couple of drills that we can do. Obviously we do a lot, so even today we've done the javelin drill, yeah. so it's a side kicking thing, shoulders back, chest forward, first and foremost to stop that shoulder hunching forwards. Broken arrows, another very good drill to do, because at the moment I would say that left arm is just a little bit too ballistic. It's okay to bring it up fairly straight, but it needs a little bit more control coming into the water on that left side, almost going back to what you were doing on that sort of middle video footage. Um, but then in terms of trying to get that catch and pull through, if you go into the app, watch the um, catch masterclass section over and over and over and over and over again but just have that sort of visual in your mind like i was saying about trying to imagine you're swimming down this narrow corridor 
recognizing that right arm at, at, at the moment way way out wide and we'll try to get it tuned up so i'll have the i'll get the video camera with me and we'll see what we can what adjustments we can make with a couple of those little drills and then i'll refilm it just to give you the benefit of looking back at it again and thinking okay well hopefully give you a little bit of confidence that it is not super hard to change it um i, I would say the harder thing to change is a two beat pig and you've done it really? oh yeah that that is so hard to get right so so hard to get right and it's Superb. It's all about the fins and then the pull boy. Yeah, fin fins and the pull boy. So you found that whole sequence worked yeah. well? Yeah, okay, that's good. That's good I yeah. remember, I think it was Christmas time. Like, I don't know if I was sick, I couldn't come to Wednesday. Mm. So I just watched it and I'm like, I didn't give that a go. Yeah, yeah. And I hate fins, so it actually makes fins enjoyable. Yeah, because you got a pur purpose behind it, yeah. Yeah, it's really the, the most impressive thing about that is not it's not really even the timing. The timing is very good, but it's the fact that you're not kicking down too deep, because that's what most people get wrong with the two bit kick, especially when they're developing it. I got some footage of myself developing it, and my my foot used to come completely out of the water, and this foot used to kick way way too deep. And if you slow the rate down as well, that foot ends up almost stalling there and creating drag. So. What I think about when I'm doing it is, is exactly what you're doing here, just trying to really reduce the amplitude so it just wants to feel like it's a very subtle movement. And it's not even, the, the two-bit kick is not a propulsive thing, it's more of like a balance thing, it just sort of gets the whole rhythm of the stroke going. But one of the things that we will do just as we finish today is I'll give you the beeper and I'll, I'll put it at probably about 72, but get you to time the kick, not the hands. And it'll either work for you or it won't. <laughs> we had Mark again. We had Mark and Mike, these two swimmers, on Sunday, on Saturday in, in Auckland. One of them thought it was the most amazing thing he's ever tried in the whole world. He said that totally makes sense. And the other guy just couldn't get it at all. I have so a feeling I won't be able to get it. Won't be able to get it. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how we go. Uh, That's my yeah. gut. The thing is, <clears throat> we don't need to change anything about this. The major thing for yourself is just getting right what you're doing up at the front there. But uh, yeah, it's. Um, just one more time, but the difference in the flow and the rhythm. <laughs> Two completely different swimmers, look at it. It's amazing. Yeah, and one of the one of the words that you could do to, to almost to sort of uh, define the difference is is purpose. The one on the, you look like you got purpose on the left side. I suppose I probably do. And obviously, you know, the, the fitness work that we've done in the squad, yeah, you know, the red mist, the CSS helps. stuff, it certainly helps to to support it. But it just goes to show that you can, you know, have, by having a little bit more oomph to the stroke and stuff. And like you say, you you like that higher rate, you like the higher rhythm to it. Um, yeah, yeah, it's um, it's been a bit frustrating probably the last couple of weeks. Like after Rado, taking a bit of a break, yeah, lost a bit of strength. Mm. But I still want it to keep the higher stroke rate. Yeah, I yeah, just yeah. Can't, no, it's harder to you yeah, can't yeah. pull through fast enough. That's right. Interesting enough, what what we're actually probably likely to find as a direct result of improving the way you're catching, it'll actually be taking you longer to pull through straight here. And hard on the shoulders because it's it's really just the shoulder that's actually um, uh, controlling the movement there. If the elbow bends better, you'll find that the stroke rate itself will actually come up a little bit naturally. It's almost like you suddenly feel like you've got your strength back. In actual fact, you haven't you haven't changed anything about your strength. All you've done is you change the angle here, so that you're starting to load the, the chest and the lats more than you're loading just the shoulder. That makes sense. So you know potentially prior to Rotto, potentially. That arm was bending a little bit more, maybe somewhere in that region. So maybe this is something that, you know, in the last few weeks it's, it's drifted out. Or the fact that you had a bit of a shoulder shoulder pain before Rotto. Yeah, I'd say, it yeah, probably say it's probably, probably been there for, for at least a few weeks before, before Rotto. Rotto. Yeah, yeah, cool. Alrighty, so looking uh, looking pretty good. I'm, I'm sure you, you must be quite happy looking at uh, looking at those things. But I think the the overriding image to leave you with is that one there. Yeah. In fact, let me just do a. <laughs> let me just do that again. Right? Home. That's right, and I'll I'll give you a screen grab of that as well, just so it's really. So I paste it on the end of the pool. So paste it on the end, the, the, the end of the pool or on your fridge. Put it on your fridge door. So every time you go to take the uh, 
take the milk out. So that's where it is at the moment. But what we'd like to see, let's just change that. That's 109 degrees. So it's pretty much exactly where it wants to be. So that's what we're looking for. That's the visual image. Oops, that didn't work. Better. That's the visual image going forward, so we're looking to try and achieve. Okay, so let's come out of here. Okay, Megan, so just for your reference, then what I'm going to do now, we'll just have a very quick chat about what we've done in that session, what seemed to work, what didn't seem to work. Um, we started off by doing some uh, of the javelin drill sequence. Um, so that's obviously 25 kick on the left side, 25 kick on the right side. And the whole idea behind that was to get you thinking about having your arm in full extension, but at the same time drawing your shoulder back a little bit. So thinking about shoulders, just shoulder blades just squeezing together and back. I put that little bit of tape on your right shoulder, which sort of did that, did that thing for you and just reminded you on that right hand side, especially not to allow the shoulder to fall too far forwards. Um, I just got my my little SD card, just one second. Oh, so, uh, yeah, so we did the, uh, did the javelin drill, thinking about uh, shoulders back and chest forwards. Um, then we did a little bit of work uh, popping the, uh, obviously doing it with the paddles, and I got, got you to start to think about actually bending the elbow better underneath the water. We had some success with that. Um, we did the doggy paddle extension drill and got you doing it against the wall, especially on the right hand side wall, to make, tr make sure you're actually trying to think about bending the elbow and brushing the elbow on the inside of the wall. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not quite so good, but what you seem to respond quite well to was actually doing the sculling drill and then actually coming back down the black line. So we did that doggy paddle extension, a bit of sculling as well. Coming down the black line, actively trying to think about pulling yourself along uh, almost like an imaginary rope underneath the body. Um, I've then filmed you, which is what we're just going to look at now. Um, so, let's get this video footage. Here we go. I got you to do a couple of swim backs. And the first one here is you actively trying to think about bending your elbow. And you're going to see the arms are still quite straight here. Well, I thought they were massively bent on that one. It's crazy to think that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Why? It's just so now, weird. The nice thing is, if we have a little look, it's probably, the hand is still wide of the shoulder, but it's not as wide as what we saw earlier on. That hand was a little bit more out, out here, but still very, very straight. Left hand side, clearly better. But the arm itself is still very, very straight. Now, if we look at the second attempt. Here we go. So this is me having given you that feedback, and you can see maybe a minor improvement but nothing massive that was a little bit better there look a little bit better still like i honestly thought i was like scraping down my guts crazy isn't it crazy now this is where I, this is the one where i do ask like, here we go oh, okay now, so this is where i do ask you to bring the bring the thumb almost towards the chest as you can see all of a sudden it's spot on but it felt weird it felt awkward look at that that's where it needs to be. So you can do it. I like I'm even laughing at this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, that one there, if we actually measure the angle at this one, it's potentially gone a little bit too much. But I, I the, the drill I was, I was giving you to do, I was asking, <laughs> that seems that you were totally following the brief. The, the actual brief, believe it or not, was, if you remember, yeah. was the thumb to actually touch the yeah, chest or the stomach. Um, but it's getting a lot closer to where it, uh, where it needs to be. <laughs> Then I've got you film. Here we go. Look, this is you swimming towards the camera. Close in towards the wall, look. So you can do it. It just felt very, very awkward. Now, let me explain why it felt so awkward. Obviously, it's a big difference between a straight arm and, and a bent elbow. But when you pull through with that straight arm, all the load, where you feel the stress and strain or the effort that you're putting in, the straight arm pull through, it all feels like it's here on the shoulder. Yeah. Hence the reason why I had a little bit of a niggle on that right hand side. When you bend the elbow much better, and again, just to show you how you're not a million miles away from Becky Adlington and how she's pulling through, look. Look at that. 
So potentially that hand is a little bit, you know, a little bit too close, but we were still doing the whole brush your thumb thing yes. as you're going along. Now when she's pulling through like this, she's actually experiencing the load not on the shoulder, which is a good thing, especially for shoulder injuries, etc. She's starting to feel it more on the chest and the lats. Yeah. So it just goes back to that sort of position here where we're pulling through like so. And we use that analogy from Dave Scott about this eyeball and the crease of your arm. The eyeball looking down towards the bottom of the pool. Not when it's like this, yeah. where it's almost looking across or even up towards the surface, depending on the flexibility. So it's here. So if you just apply a little bit of pressure. So that's now, yeah, you're right feeling it good. here and here, as opposed to when it's straight, it's all on there and just on the on, right on the nose and, and on the elbow. elbow. So maybe and that's your cue. Maybe that's your cue. If you feel stress on the elbow, it's because it's you know because you're over overextending the arm. Look at that there. Pretty good. One I'm of, giggling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the other reasons why it might have felt a bit weird, and this is just something to bear in mind, because I'd asked you to physically I, brush the thumb. I, I was the hand like, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you, you can see it, <laughs> if you close that thumb up towards the side, and you know, and try to do the same sort of thing, so you can do that movement. That's, I mean, that's. If I was filming that, I'd be saying whole strokes textbook now. But obviously, it doesn't However, feel good. Yeah. At the, yeah, it doesn't feel good at this point. So it's going to take a little bit of bedding in. But interesting enough, what we finished off by doing this is, um, I think you've already made the judgment call on this. Was we, I got you to utilise the tempo trainer, but rather than actually timing it on your hand entry, we timed it on the feet and the heels kicking up towards the surface there, and that seemed to make a massive difference because it was de-emphasising the stress and strain that you'd normally put into the catch to generate the propulsion, and you're just using the legs to then drive the stroke. And we had you up at 80 strokes per minute by then, and you were quite surprised that it yeah. that it was that quick. Yeah, definitely. Mm. So it's um, yeah, it's certainly something for you to um, sort of think about and have a little look at. So we've gone through a few different ways to skin the same cat there today. I don't expect you to be able to process it all within today's session, but over the next few sessions, have a little go working through it. The danger is, of course, that you just overload yourself and think about everything all together at the same time. So probably for the next couple of sessions, just allow yourself not to be quite so focused on times and things like that. Even if you come down tomorrow morning, yeah. I won't put you at the front of the line, just sit down. And you can remind me that I said that today. Yes. <laughs> if, if I suddenly get the urge to put you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You said. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you just, don't get those passes very often. No, that's right, yeah, yeah. But just going through the, going through the motions of, uh, of actually just trying to refine the stroke a little bit and, um, and seeing what works. Yeah. I, I, eyeballs and heels, yeah, eyeballs and heels. There we go, that might, might be what this whole session summarizes down to. If you do that, um, and then just sort of you know, give yourself the, the idea that, okay, well, I'll just try a few things. Some of it's gonna feel really good, some of it's not. I mean, this looks good, but it doesn't feel good at this point yeah. in time. So it's gonna take a little bit of time just to, just to adjust to that, but um, yeah, I think I think the the video footage right from the start when you've got the nice two beat leg kick coming along and, and, and flowing, it's it's all there. Just needs a little bit of TLC on that. Yeah. Both halves need to work. Both halves need to get work together exactly right. They can do it. You can do it. It just takes you know, yeah. a bit of tuning up. We'll but, uh, yeah, absolutely. Now I'll just stop that recording there as well.